This is Education Insight. I'm Lacey Kendall, your host for this program that looks at education in the Inland Empire. Back in 2019, Amazon founder Jeff Bezos and his wife, Mackenzie Scott, divorced. As part of the settlement, she received 4% of Amazon stock shares, which adds up to about $36 billion. She then announced that she would immediately begin to give that money away to worthy causes. And since then, one after another, community charities, schools, and community service groups have opened up an email to find that Mackenzie Scott thought they could really use millions. Recently, that happened here in the Inland Empire. First at the College of the Desert in Palm Desert, and then at Chafee College in Rancho Cucamonga, where the gift was for $25 million. Today on Education Insight, we're looking at what kinds of change in local education might be created with that kind of money and what plans Chafee College is now making. In just a moment, we'll speak with Chafee Superintendent President, Dr. Henry Shannon. As the campus looks ahead, we'll also take a look back and see what has been created with the late Jack Brown gift of $10 million to Cal State San Bernardino five years ago. It was the biggest they'd ever received. We'll be joined by CSUSB philanthropic giving expert, Julie Nichols, for the whole story. And speaking of colleges, we introduce you by phone with the new chancellor of the San Bernardino Community College District, Diana Z. Rodriguez. With 20,000 students and thousands of educators to lead, she's got some plans and we'll find out what they are. But first, from Chafee College in Rancho Cucamonga, Superintendent President, Dr. Henry Shannon. Dr. Shannon, thank you for joining us here today in our program. Thank you. First off, could you briefly describe Chafee College for the listeners who may not know much about the campus? Chafee College is located in Southern California. We are one of the older community colleges in the state of California. We started back in 1883. The Chafee brothers, who were Canadians, uh, were uh, instrumental in starting education in the Inland Empire. And we were initially a part of the University of Southern California, the agricultural component. We became a part of the uh, California Community College system in 1916. And as many of you know, there are 72 districts, 116 campuses of the California Community College system itself. JP College has three major locations in Rancho Cucamonga, Fontana, Chino, but also we have a center in uh, called the Intech Center in Fontana itself. So we serve about 29,000 students per year on our on our locations. We are a Hispanic serving institution, which means that at least 25% of our student body are Latinx. In our case, it's two thirds. We serve 80% underserved populations or students of color. And as uh, many of you have heard in 19, Sorry, 2017, J.P. College was named one of the top 10 community colleges in the nation by the Aspen Institute. Mm. We're very proud, and we often call ourselves the jewel of the Inland Empire, and we have about 1,300 employees. Wow. So you have a, you have a few places you could spend this kind of money. <laughs> absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. We serve several cities. And those cities, uh, northern part is Rancho, to the south is Chino, Chino Hills, to east is Fontana, to the west you will find Montclair, Upland, and then our the south you have Ontario. Mm -hmm. But we are very proud to serve these cities over the years, and we passed a bond measure called Measure P in November of 2018 to grow out the district even more with a new campus, a uh, returning campus in Ontario. But expanding our footprint and on Fontana and as well as Chino and also expanding the campus location at the Rancho site. So we're very, very excited about this time at Chafee College. Yeah. So let's talk about this time uh, and the money. I was told that the donation of $25 million came as quite a surprise. How did you first learn 
that Chafee College would be receiving such a huge sum of money? As you said, it was a great surprise, a delightful surprise. Mm -hmm. I was contacted by email uh, by an anonymous person, which I was not quite sure uh, was accurate or not. And uh, a colleague of mine on the East Coast uh, had reminded me that this person had been trying to reach me. And so I did reach back to that person, and the person began to talk to me about the fact that they love what the impact J.P. College had been on students. You know, we often say community colleges serve the top 100%, and we serve so many people who are underserved who need our assistance, and they want us to have a meaningful impact on these students mm -hmm. that we serve, and they saw that we were doing some very innovative things and want us to do more. And so as the uh, person from the foundation began to speak about the fact that they wanted to give Chafee some money, and I'm thinking that, you know, well, money, a few dollars, a few thousand. Yeah. Uh, she said that she was going to give Chafee, through the McKenzie Scott Foundation, $25 million. Woo! And I was floored. It was unbelievable. It brought me to tears, honestly. Because, as many of you know, we don't have large endowments in community colleges. People assume, because we're publicly funded, that there's no need to give to the foundations. But this is the largest gift that J.P. College has ever received in its history. Mm -hmm. So I am uh, tickle pink, very excited, but also um, thinking about how we can really make this uh, stretch to do other things for our students in the future, as well as for the present. So I've got to know, what reaction did you get from your colleagues there at Chafee College when you shared the news with them for the very first time? But first, my governing board, I shared it with the governing board, with the faculty and staff in the community, and they were uh, just gleeful, mm -hmm. just unbelievable. Uh, many couldn't believe it. Uh, as, as I was so excited, I didn't believe it at first myself. But just uh, surprised, excited, uh, wanting to know how we can make impact on our students to make sure this money is uh, used wisely. We had a, um, a town hall virtual summit to get input from our faculty and staff. And they came with some really neat ideas. Uh, this town hall was done a few weeks ago. 160 faculty and staff and students gathered and discussed ideas, how one to leverage the money, how to make this gift one in which we could use for perpetuity, as well as the fact that putting something in an endowment, uh, looking at ways to do apprenticeships, workforce development, uh, suggesting that we uh, support our in-tech center over in the Fontana area. And one of the things that I thought was really in interesting, too, was to develop an entrepreneurship center. And these yeah. ideas, I think, we're permitting now to see which ones make the best sense for us. But for me, is changing the lives of one student, you change a family and you change a community. And so we're trying to make sure that we do that in a very meaningful way with supportive or wraparound services that make sense, as well as to look at ways in which this pandemic has allowed us to think differently about higher education. As we, you all know, we pivoted last March, going from more face-to-face -to, -face to more uh, online. And as we go back to the post-pandemic era, what kinds of things are best suited for our learners and our communities in the future? So we are uh, thinking about how these funds could be used to be innovative, thinking out the box, looking at ways in which we provide kinds of services and programs for the future here in the Inland Empire. Doctor, do you know why Mackenzie Scott and her team specifically identified Chafee College to be on their list of recipients out of so many other community colleges across the nation? What was it that, that they really zoomed in on? Well, I think they zeroed in on institutions that are in need of support. For example, they're supporting historically black colleges and universities, mm -hmm. tribal colleges, universities serving Native Americans. But the foundation described institutions that are agents of change. That is, thinking outside the box. People who uh, are organizations that provide for the least of our people who are sometimes forgotten. 
Uh, you know, when I mentioned about Casey College serving the top 100 percent, too often we think higher education is just for the very few, the very elite. But what has really empowered me in working in higher education, especially in community colleges, is that we have, we like America. We open our doors to everyone. And the idea, the idea of a high tide lifting all boats, that's something that we do, and we do it very well. It's not where you start, but how you end. And we have an outstanding faculty, outstanding faculty with wraparound services that are bar none that are best in the country. From taking someone who comes into our doors to move them to be outstanding citizens, outstanding business people, lawyers, doctors, teachers, you name it, we can do it. Mm -hmm. But you got to have that vision. And that vision is one in which we know is important to take someone from where they are to where they want to be to make their dreams come true. And we do it very well with our great programs and services that we have at Tafee College. Mm. If you just joined us, we're speaking with Dr. Henry Shannon, Superintendent President for Chapey College in Rancho Cucamonga. The recent recipients of a $25 million gift from Mackenzie Scott, the ex-wife of Amazon's Jeff Bezos. That money intended to help Chafee College expand their educational offerings. Doctor, this grant must change the way you think about the work ahead for Chafee College and the possibilities uh, that are now presented for transforming the lives of these students. How much good do you believe $25 million really can do? Before you answer that, <laughs> we need to take a quick break. We're learning about the recent $25 million gift to Chafee College and speaking with Superintendent President Dr. Henry Shannon from that campus. More in a moment. I'm Lacey Kendall, and this is Education Insight. Welcome back to Education Insight. While schools throughout inland Southern California are all hoping that this year they can begin to rebuild, a lot of people believe that community colleges are the ones to really watch. The San Bernardino Community College District welcomes a new chancellor in the fall, and we'll meet her later in our program. And big news came this summer when Chafee College was given $25 million to further education there. A gift from Mackenzie Scott, the former wife of Amazon founder, <laughs> now astronaut, Jeff Bezos. Chafee College President Dr. Henry Shannon is with us. Before the break, doctor, I asked, how much good can $25 million really do? Your thoughts? It could be a, it could be as I said, a life-changing gift for us. Uh, one of the things that Mackenzie Scott and her husband, ex-husband now, are part of a giving pledge established by Bill and Melinda Gates and Warren Buffett, and the idea is to use their wealth to set a new standard for bringing people to the table to improve their lives. For us at JP College, it's thinking about the paradigm of education. And that paradigm is one in which we've got to be very learned-centered. We've got to make the institution more focused on taking people where they are to where they need to be, not having it fit into a square peg or round hole. I think that's something that we have to think differently in terms of our approach to education. So how does a school like Chafee think about what it is that, that the learner needs and how the learning needs to fit their needs, where time is not an issue, the programmatic focus is not an issue, that it really is geared or tailored toward the individuals and more so than just having them fit into our system. Mm -hmm. So those are things that I think that as an educator, we can do a better job at. Too often, we thought of teaching a certain time of the day and when learning can occur in 24 hours, seven days a week. I think that's something that we have to think differently about too, especially as this pandemic has taught us, is that people want learning in different ways. Some people learn face-to-face, -face, some learn in a hybrid model, mm -hmm. some learn online. And we've got to make sure that our courses and our programs fit these types of learning modes. So that's the exciting part of using this gift to do that. But leveraging this to do more, 
we don't want to have the money spent and it's gone in, in, in two days. I think that's yeah. not what we're trying to approach it with. It's kind of like when you throw a, a rock into the water and you see the pebble uh, and the way spread out from that pebble that you throw in, in the water. We want to make sure that we have this transformative gift to do more than just the $25 million that was given to us, that it generates $50 million. And then we also bring other philanthropists to see how important community colleges are. You know, uh, you think of the Harvards, the Stanfords in the world that have these big, large endowments of 5 to $6, 7000000000 million, or such a billion dollars. And too often, community colleges are forgotten. Our foundations need scholarship money, they need endowment money for our capital, for operating expenses. Those are things that we need to do differently, think differently about. As I mentioned, we serve the top 100%. Community colleges in California serve one-fifth of all the community colleges' students in the country. Mm. So if we have an impact in California, just think what we can do with the other parts of the modeling for other community colleges across the country. Yeah. With philanthropy giving to community colleges, too. And not just take the college. Of course, we want another $25 million, $30 million, but we should be also for the other uh, 116 campuses across our system, too, as well. To clarify for me, the interviewer, and for our listeners, very often colleges and universities will get grant money from institutions like the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. But this wasn't a grant. No one applied for this. This is just a gift from an individual. Is that fair to say? It is very fair to say. It's a gift, a gift from the heart, a gift with no strings attached, a gift to change the lives of individuals. Oftentimes, grants have many strings attached where you have to provide tons of reports over a period of time to either continue the grant or toward the end of the grant. This gift was given from the heart of Ms. Mackenzie Scott to say to Jamie College and the other organizations, college universities she's funded, how can you transform someone's life with these funds that are given from her heart to Casey College in this case. It's a gift with no strings attached, but we have to provide three years of reporting uh, that we, how we use the money. But as far as the uh, limitations, there are none, except it can't be used for campaigns. But they really want you to have meaningful impact on your population. And so because there are no strings attached, the sky is the limit. So we're thinking outside the box as to how these things can be done our programs can look differently and think differently about how the learners can be served. What kinds of problems, Dr. Shannon, uh, was the campus perhaps already facing that now it appears this money could help to begin to resolve immediately? Well, some of the challenges that we have are food and housing insecurities. A fifth of our students we found are, are more are experiencing food and housing insecurities. So providing monies for food, it's hard to Concentrate in your classroom when you're hungry or your family is hungry. Or you got to choose between going to school and providing a substance for your family. So providing for our food pantry, we call Panther Care, has been an area that we are looking at. Housing security, working as partners with people who are in the housing industry. So our students have a place to stay because that is an issue for us. So both food and housing security are issues for our system as well as for our campus here in the Inland Empire. So those are two of the challenges I see that we can help with these funds, along with the fact that many of our students still can't afford higher education. We have the College Promise scholarships, but it doesn't pay for transportation or child care or just living expenses, period. So what can we do to intervene in the lives of our students so that these are not challenges that become barriers for them to matriculate to higher education? To me, higher education is a fault line. Yeah, I would not be where I am today were it not for higher education. You know, I came from a, a very small place in the South and moved to St. Louis, and my family were, I'm the first in my family to, to go to college. But college to me has afforded me the opportunity to grow my family. Yeah. You know, my kids, uh, when they finished high school, they thought about not if they would go to college, but where they would go to college. Uh, my, 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 one of my daughters is a lawyer, one has been a teacher. My son works in the banking industry. I have one son who's still a rapper right now, but he's thinking about going back to the culinary industry. But I think what my wife and I, my wife is also a first-generation college student, too, when she was in college. But she graduated from the same school that I went to as well. 
and became a school principal. As well as before that, she was a counselor in high school and in college. But both of us have uplifted our families to think about higher education being a way to transform our lives and our families. And so, as well, our other family members can look at us and say, hey, if Henry or my wife's name is Gwendolyn, if they can do it, why can't I do it too? So it becomes a modeling effect for other members of your family to say, hey, you know what? I can go to college. Mm -hmm. I was fortunate to have a cousin, uh, Horace Mitchell, Dr. Mitchell, who was president at Cal State Bakersfield. He was my older cousin, but he also was a model for me to say, hey, you know what? You can go to college like I have gone to college. And it's those kind of things that become ripple effects for all of us to model the behavior we want others to follow and emulate. So my wife uh, and other cousins and others who have been in our family have gone on to see our education as a vehicle to transform not only our immediate family lives, but the lives of our friends and families and our communities. Yeah. You mentioned a little bit earlier a community forum that was held uh, once the uh, it was announced that the money had, had been offered. And I'm wondering, how is the campus now preparing, as you move forward, uh, preparing to spend the money? Are there meetings taking place to determine priorities? What's going on there? We started our first meeting with a town hall. We have others coming up. Uh, we're waiting until the start of fall classes. Uh, summer school ends next week. And we'll go back to getting some more ideas. We have a cabinet and a governing board who are thinking about the future of Chafee College and what it will look like 10 years from now. So looking at the roadmap for the future for us, it is what does education look like in the future? What are the kinds of programs that we haven't thought of that are needed? You know, logistics is a big piece of healthcare, manufacturing, advanced manufacturing. Look at those industries here in our Inland Empire. Uh, I know when I think of the biotechnology area, what I think is more important for us at Chafee College is to envision a future where we bring industry and business to us because we have the talent. We don't want our talent to leave mm-hmm. the Inland Empire, but to be here with us. But you've got to develop the talent. It's kind of like chicken or the egg. You know, if you have people who have skills and abilities, you will attract companies and businesses in the Inland Empire. We're told that Ms. Mackenzie Scott is rather elusive. If you were given the opportunity today to speak to her, what would you want to say? First of all, I would want to thank her uh, for thinking outside the box and doing things very differently. You know, um, it's fine to go in space because you're a billionaire, but it's better to look at who's on this earth that needs some help. Who are the underserved? Who are the underprivileged? For her to think about community colleges, for industries, for places where she's putting the money where the most need is. Uh, we don't want to let problems that we have now be exacerbated. And there are many billionaires, in my humble opinion, who use their money for uh, other things that don't help people directly but are self-serving for themselves. Uh, when you have people on the planet who are hungry, who have no place to live, whose family are in real challenging situations, what better use of dollars can be there to help them improve their lives? Uh, I, I know when I think about our system we have for prisons, it's better to build men and women than try to mend them when they become adults or get into the system. Mm-hmm. We were fortunate to have uh, a program called Turning Point. We work with men and women who are uh, in the uh, both California Institute for Women and the men's prison in Chino trying to make sure they change their lives by through education. And we've had a program at the women's prison, for example, since 2005. And the women who have been in that program, only one have ever returned back to the institution. So it's better to me to spend money wisely to avoid people going into prison or if they're in prison when they come out, they have a very useful skill that they can make sure their lives are better so they're not incarcerated again because the cost of incarceration is tremendous. So it's better to make sure we invest in people and try to remediate them at the end. Well, Dr. Shannon, congratulations to you and all of the folks at Chafee College in Rancho Cucamonga. And thank you so much for taking a few moments to take our call today and share the good news. Thank you so much for having me. And I would say go Panthers. Coming up on today's Education Insight, we meet the new chancellor of the San Bernardino Community College District to find out what her big goals are for community college education in our region.
But first, we continue our look at big money and education in the Inland Empire. Five years ago, and shortly before he passed, Jack Brown, the former CEO of Stater Brothers Markets, gave California State University San Bernardino a one-time personal gift of $10 million. In the time since, the campus has renamed the College of Business there to the Jack H. Brown College of Business and Public Administration. But much more than that has changed. On the phone with us is Julie Nichols. She's the Interim Associate Vice President for Philanthropic Giving at Cal State San Bernardino. Julie, thanks for joining us today. Well, thank you for having me, Lacey. Could you take us back to five years ago when CSUSB first found out that such a large gift was coming your way? Well, first, let me tell you a little bit about Jack Brown and Mm. what this great gift uh, has done for us. Jack was just a terrific guy. Uh, He grew up in the city of San Bernardino as an only child. His dad was a chief deputy sheriff who passed away when Jack was only eight. And his mom, Rose, was a sales clerk back in the 1950s. And she made $12.50 a week. So uh, she struggled a little bit. And she took in sewing alterations to bring in a little extra cash. Jack started working as a grocery store clerk stocking shelves when he was only 13. Mm. Uh, a few, la- few years later, he went to the, into the Navy, um, but eventually he returned to San Bernardino and the grocery store business. And then in 1981, he became the president and CEO of State of Brothers Market, which at the time was a small chain of grocery stores. And over the next 35 years, he built it up to become a multi-billion dollar business that it is today. Um, Jack had been involved with Cal State San Bernardino from the very beginning. He uh, planted trees on the site where the new campus was going to be with the San Bernardino Kiwanis Club back in the early 60s. And over the years, he became more and more involved with the campus and especially the College of Business and Public Administration. Uh, He established a number of scholarships on campus, including the Rose Brown Scholarship for Single Parents, which honors the memory of his mother. Mm. Um, And then in 2016, Jack gave this truly transformational gift, $10 million to the College of Business and Public Administration. It was and is the largest cash gift in the university's history. And in recognition of Jack's incredible generosity, the college was renamed the Jack H. Brown College of Business and Public Administration. And then tragically, Jack passed away only a few months after making his gift. So he wasn't able to know the incredible impact uh, that gift would make. We have stayed close with his widow, Debbie Brown, who is just a wonderful person and a fabulous philanthropist in her own right in the years since. So let's talk about impact and this incredible gift. First off, a lot of times when someone makes a philanthropic gift like this to a college or university, they have some stipulations on how they might like it to be spent. Did Jack Brown do that? You know, Jack put very few restrictions on the gift, which is unusual and actually very visionary. He wanted the funds to be endowed, which means that the $10 million gift is invested and that only a portion of the interest on the money can be spent. And that means that Jack's gift will produce funding for our programs forever and that it continues to grow over time. Uh, Right now, that $10 million gift is worth more than $12 million. Mm. Um, The only two directions that Jack gave us on how he wanted the gift to be used was that it should provide Uh, academic enrichment, and student scholarships. How did the campus determine how to spend the money? Was there a process that was started in those early days? Yeah. um, Our recently retired uh, and wonderful dean, uh, Larry Rose, and the senior leadership of the Jack H. Brown College of Business and Public Administration uh, worked together to put together a spending plan, uh, which they uh, vetted with the faculty and alumni and students and as well as the campus administration. Um, Jack's gift was truly transformative because it helped the college uh, to think big, Lacey, and really 
reimagined its future. So tell us about some of the projects you've been able to begin as a result of this generous gift. Well, I think one of the most important things that we did with the money is we supported scholarships for the kind of students that that Jack very much wanted to support. So, like I mentioned, his mother was alone for much of the time that Jack was growing up. And so a substantial um, scholarship support is committed to single parents uh, pursuing a college degree. Mm -hmm. Jack was a veteran, and so scholarships from this fund also support veterans. And he also had a a profound interest in young student leaders. And so some of the scholarship support uh, supports them. Um, Usually um, students who come to Cal State San Bernardino um, who have grown up in the city of San Bernardino. So today, um, more than 40 students have received over $186,000 in scholarship support from Jack's gift. Great. Great. Julie, your campus has also built a number of new programs as well. Lots of different projects have received funding, but some of the most interesting have been um, the college's centers of excellence and institutes. Uh, We have a world-class center for entrepreneurship and now a brand new school of entrepreneurship, the first school of entrepreneurship in the state of California. Uh, It received funding from, from Jack's money. And also the Leonard Transportation Center has received some support. So, Um, It's enhanced the student experience and helped us engage with the community on a deeper level. So looking back now, would you say that the money has done exactly what the campus hoped it would do? Think about that for a minute (laughs) as we take a quick break. We'll be right back with Julie Nichols, philanthropy expert with California State University, San Bernardino. We're talking about two big financial gifts to college and university campuses here in the Inland Empire. One arriving soon and one five years ago that changed Cal State San Bernardino forever. I'm Lacey Kendall, and this is Education Insight. Support provided by College Futures Foundation working to catalyze systemic change, increase college degree completion, and close equity gaps so that the dream of opportunity can become a reality available to every student, regardless of zip code, skin color, or income, at collegefutures.org. Welcome back to Education Insight. I'm Lacey Kendall, joined today by phone with Julie Nichols, philanthropy and development expert for California State University, San Bernardino. Julie, before the break, I asked if you think the money has done what the campus expected it would. What are your thoughts? No, I think it is bigger. I think the impact is bigger than we ever imagined it to be. It's hard to imagine um, impact on this scale. Uh, It truly put the Jack H. Brown College of Business and Public Administration on the map. Um, Many of the best business schools around the country are named for benefactors who believed in them like Jack believed in CSUSB and the College of Business. So, you know, the Jack H. Brown College has always provided excellent education, but now more people know about it because of Jack's transformative gift. What would you say was the most significant enhancement caused by the Jack H. Brown gift? So I think the most significant enhancement has been how uh, it has helped us improve uh, technology and our student learning labs and and help students have access to the best technology. Um, you know, in this right now, a lot of schools Uh, struggle with this because of the rate of technological change and because of Jack's gift, we've been able to do some some great things. We've renovated some learning labs that are just, they're the favorites of the faculty and students. They love working in them. They're beautiful spaces. Mm -hmm. Julie, do you feel like Jack Brown would be proud today of what California State University San Bernardino did with his generous gift? I think Jack would be proud of the way his gift has changed the college that he loves so much and really CSUSB as a whole for the better. 
he cared so deeply about his hometown and the entire Inland Empire. His gift really put the Jack H. Brown College of Business and Public Administration on the map, and we are forever grateful to him and Debbie for this magnificent gift. We've been speaking with Julie Nichols. She is the interim associate vice president for philanthropic giving at California State University, San Bernardino. And we've been talking about the Jack H. Brown gift of $10 million that has been instrumental in creating so much change there on the campus. Julie, thank you for taking our call and joining us here today on the program. Thank you so much, Lacey. It was great talking with you. In August, a new chancellor will begin to lead the 20,000 students of the San Bernardino Community College District, which includes Crafton Hills College, San Bernardino Valley College, a workforce training facility, and KVCR TV and FM. The new leader is the only Latina to serve in such a position in Southern California. And part of her position includes leading the district's educational enterprise that generates $621 million in economic growth to the local economy. Welcome to our program, Chancellor Diana Z. Rodriguez. Well, thank you, Lacey. Thank you for the invitation. Happy to be here. The San Bernardino Community College District Board of Trustees recently appointed you as the district's 16th chancellor. Tell us about finding out that you had been selected for this position. In one word, I would have to say excited. (laughs) I'm excited for the opportunity to serve my community and our students in the region. You know, I've called San Bernardino home for more than 30 years. You know, like many of our students in San Bernardino Community College District, my parents um, didn't go to college, but they worked hard to give my siblings, I mean, every opportunity that they didn't have as children you know i am number four of five of of their children Mm -hmm. and i'm a proud community college graduate a proud transfer student and a cal state san bernardino graduate and for the past five years i've had the privilege of serving our community as the san bernardino valley college president and i have to tell you you know when i walk across our campuses i see myself in our students Mm. i know what it's like to be a first generation college student i know what it's like to juggle being a full-time employee while being a full-time student and still having you know uh, responsibilities at home Mm -hmm. and and i know that perhaps many of your listeners just know that struggle as well yeah no but really it's an honor and a privilege to be able to give back to my community as the chancellor of what I think is one of the most amazing community college districts in the state. And I truly am humbled that the Board of Trustees trusted me to take on the role as chancellor and not only serve the students of San Bernardino Valley College, but also Crafton Hills College in Ukaipa, which is just a phenomenal campus, and oversee our TV and radio station, KVCR. So I am incredibly excited for the opportunity. Now that you're mentioning that, as we've said, 30 years in education, and while Blythe is the hometown uh, of our incoming chancellor and where this career began, for many years, as you pointed out, you've been a local gal. Could you tell us a little bit more Mm -hmm. about that? What has that experience brought to this moment? You know, I, I'm very fortunate to have grown up in a in an area. You know, Black, as you know, is a very small agricultural town on the Arizona border, um, and a very large sense of community within within Blythe. And in coming to San Bernardino, when I did, I felt that sense of community here. You know, obviously, you know, San Bernardino and the surrounding areas much much larger than Blythe, much mm-hmm. larger, but still has very much of that hometown feel to it. And that's an environment that I think that I thrive in. And that's an environment that I love working and living in. So I've had amazing opportunities. What attracted you to the position of chancellor? Well, you know, by nature, I'm an optimist. And in public higher education, we're always thinking about the future and making life better for the next generation. So as I considered the opportunity to serve as chancellor, I was attracted by the potential to make a difference Mm -hmm. and to make a difference in my community and in my region. And I know that we have the right ingredients and the momentum, really, to do good things for our students 
Mm-hmm. This year, we received the highest accreditation possible at Crafton Hills College and Valley College, you know, among the best in California. And it's a testament to the caliber of the people and the quality of our education. And, you know, and it's no secret that this is a critical time for our students, and there's so much that we need to do. And I recognize that I'm entering the role of chancellor at a critical time when many families and students are doing their best to bounce back from the pandemic, you know, both economically and educationally. And as you know, during the pandemic, many of our students and many families, right, paused their education to take care of those families. Yeah. Yeah. And unfortunately, others lost their jobs during the pandemic, and that made it difficult for them to choose between going to school and putting food on the table. And meanwhile, many of our students were considered, excuse me, essential workers, which I'm so proud of them. Right? They treated our medical emergencies, responded to wildfires, stocked our grocery stores, worked in warehouses and delivered goods. You know, they kept things running and moving during the darkest hours of the pandemic so that others could stay safe and incredibly proud, incredibly proud of them. And, you know, helping students earn degrees, certificates, credentials, and achieve economic mobility is really our number one priority here at the San Bernardino Community College District. So incredibly proud of of the people that are here. Yeah. Yeah. If you just joined us, we're speaking with Chancellor Diana Z. Rodriguez. She is the incoming chancellor, actually, of the San Bernardino Community College District. She begins her position coming up in August. So, Chancellor Here in a few weeks, you'll begin waking up to head this position where you are the only Latina chancellor of a community college district in Southern California. What does that particular aspect feel like? Oh, great question. You know, one of the reasons California is the envy of other states and nations is because of our diversity. Uh, We have diverse, talented minds who make our economy strong and vibrant, and it's the diversity of our brain trust Right, that makes California just shine. But frankly, we have more work to do. You know, from, from where I sit, it feels like there should be more Latina chancellors. Uh-huh. And more broadly speaking, there, there should be more women chancellors and presidents and more diversity in the leadership of our colleges and universities. You know, studies have shown that students do better academically when they relate and see themselves in our teachers, professors, and mentors. So as we think about ways that we can help our students succeed in college, we have to think about the diversity of our college workforce. It's not only a priority to me, but also to the state chancellor of the community college system and our policymakers in Sacramento. So I am truly gratified that uh, our governor and our legislature, excuse me, recently allocated funding in this year's state budget to help community colleges recruit and attract more faculty and staff that mirrors the diversity of our student body. And they also funded, you know, providing us funding to expand professional development opportunities for our existing faculty and staff to serve students, you know, through the lens of diversity, equity, inclusion, and anti-racism. So I'm excited to be here, um, you know, as a Latina chancellor and just, you know, hopefully we can do more work in the area of um, DEIA. Yeah. You mentioned the pandemic. As we, Mm -hmm. I was going to say walk out, but as we sort of slowly (laughs) tiptoe out of this, out of this moment in time, what is your vision for community colleges and for the students there in the next six to 10 months? Six to 10 months. Yeah, my vision, I think, is is really simple. Safety and opportunity. And here's what I mean by that, right? We must ensure the health and the safety of our students, faculty, and staff by following the guidance of our public health officials. Uh We have a safe reopening task force that we put together of faculty and staff that are helping us think through the best practices of classroom and workforce safety. And I'm very grateful for their work and dedication, you know, despite the complicated circumstances and the ever-changing circumstances that they are staying on top of. And when I say opportunity, I mean that we must encourage our students to continue having access to courses, to training, to tutoring, to counseling, and to all our other services to get ahead in their careers. The one thing that our colleges have learned during this pandemic is to act with flexibility and urgency. Mm -hmm. This means that we'll continue offering the flexibility of in-person and online distance learning 
for our students because we want their students to be comfortable in whatever learning environment that they choose. Right? It also means that we'll continue serving our students with urgency to provide them the financial aid and support services they need to bounce back from this you know, terrible pandemic that has taken so many lives. Yeah. So that's, that's what I see in the next six to 10 months. What do you think will be your toughest challenge as chancellor? You know, I think it's just that. I think our toughest challenge right now will be to encourage our former students to return to the classroom or return to education in whatever format to complete their degrees. Um, And also to instill in the public that our colleges and all of our sites really are doing everything possible to ensure that when they arrive at one of our facilities, one of our campuses, they are coming into a very, very safe environment as safe as we can make it. You know, we hope that folks feel comfortable coming back, continuing their education, um, or just coming to us to start their education. So I think that's going to be one of our uh, biggest struggles. One last question. This show has college students from all over San Bernardino and Riverside County that listen. Is there any advice or direction that you might have for them about finding the greatest success after a pandemic? Yeah. You know, a recent study, you know, just came to mind, right? The California Student Aid Commission found that seven out of 10 students lost some or all of their income because of the economic shift caused by the pandemic. Our number one message to the students and families right now is don't give up on your education. Yeah. Do not give up. We will help you in any way that we can. We can help you find financial resources. We can help you pay for it. We have a generous financial aid system in which nearly 8 out of 10 of our students, 80% of our students, pay zero tuition dollars and fees. And our students get cash for college when they apply for the free application for federal student aid, better known as the FAFSA, and the California Dream Act portion. You know, and by the way, for all of those who are listening, um, if you could please help us get the word out to the students and families that it's not too late to apply for this financial aid to attend a community college. You know, the deadline isn't until September 2nd. So please, you know, the best advice I could give is please do not give up on your education. We are here (laughs) for you. We are here. We've been speaking with the incoming chancellor of the San Bernardino Community College District, who will be overseeing two college campuses and 20,000 students, plus a workforce training program, as well as KVCR TV and FM located on the San Bernardino Valley College campus. You've got <laughs> you've got your hands full. Diana yes. Z. Rodriguez, thanks for taking our call today and have a great school year. Well, thank you. And and thank you again for inviting me. You know, I'm a true believer that the Inland Empire is critical to California's future. You know, our true potential lies in our people, particularly our students, who you know, are our next generation of leaders, educators, workforce, everything. And you know, I'll, I'll leave you with this. In uh, looking ahead in 2026, the San Bernardino Community College District will be celebrating its first 100 years of serving families and students in the Inland Empire. And as chancellor, you know, I'm looking forward to deepening our roots in the community and continuing to work with growing inland achievement so that together, you know, we uplift this next generation. And thank you again for having me today. Truly my honor. On upcoming editions of Education Insight, we'll be looking at the actual value of a college education right now. And what Inland Empire school teachers and administrators wish parents knew. Be sure and join us for those stories and so many more when we get together again next month for Education Insight. I'm Lacey Kendall. Education Insight is produced in partnership with KVCR San Bernardino. Our executive producer is Jacob Poor, and our production engineer is Tyler Vizi. Alyssa Silva is our production assistant, and Lacey Kendall is your host. Support is provided by Growing Inland Achievement, working together for inland education and economic success. 
and by College Futures Foundation. Do you have questions or suggestions for the future topics we should be covering? Write to us at educationinsight.org. Join us again next time for Education Insight. Ha, 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 ha.